and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about my very early transfer plans for game week 22. I'm filming as the Brighton Wolves game is still going on. As it stands, it's nil-nil, but that could all change by the end of this video. So let's get straight into the video, see how my team is doing, and then my transfer plans for the next game week. Here we go, people. This is what we are currently looking at. So in goal, I went for Ariola this week. It's not too much of an issue this game week because Ariola and Dorovka actually got the same points. But I really did expect West Ham to keep a clean sheet against Sheffield United. <laughs> but it ended up being two all. This does happen in FPL. You think that you've got a really obvious pick and then it doesn't pay off in the way you expect it. But on the plus side, Ariola played the full 90 minutes and he got a save point. So I got three points in total. It's much better than a blank. <laughs> so I will take that. And then I tried taking a bit of a risk by playing Trent. Unfortunately, he is still injured. He did not feature in the game. So I'll be getting Trippier's one pointer off the bench. Again, I'll take it. <laughs> it's an extra point. Every little helps. And then Saliba, he got the clean sheet. And I'm really pleased because this is the first one I've had with him since transferring him in. Arsenal obviously won 5 0 to Palace. What a game. I won't lie, I am a bit gutted that Saliba didn't get any attacking returns from that game, especially when you look at the absolute monster haul that um, Gabriel had. But that's the game. Saliba will have his week. I'm sure his time to shine is coming up soon. And then we've got Estupinian, who is currently playing. As it stands, it's nil-nil. And if I can get an Estupinian hat-trick, a hat-trick? <laughs> clean sheet. Oh, well, hat-trick too would be nice. But if I can get a clean sheet, I'll be really happy. He looked really attacking in the game. He's looking strong. Well, so I haven't seen the second half, but so far, so good. So I am hoping for something big from him, which would really, really help me rank-wise. I am currently on a green arrow. I think I'm around 490,000. If I can get something, a few points from Estupinian, I think that will help me go through the ranks. Nice, nice um, gradual trajectory at the moment. And then coming into my midfield, Richarlison. His role up front is working out so well. This game week, he did manage to score a goal and he got a bonus point. He scored six of his seven goals this season in the past six game weeks. So I really, really hope this streak continues. And it's quite nice where at the moment I haven't got Salah, Haaland, Son. He's probably quite a good one to look at for captaincy in future. And I am not making the best captaincy choices <laughs> really this season. So fingers crossed the consistency will continue and I can whack the captaincy on him. And then talking of consistency, he is taking the place in my team of just being so reliable. Goodbye, Ollie Watkins. Hello, Anthony Gordon. I absolutely love this man. He scored one of Newcastle's two goals against City and he's just such an impressive player. His home record is amazing. He's looking stronger away from home. I think I'm going to be holding on to him for quite a while. If I didn't have him... I think I would go for Isak, but Anthony Gordon is just there, ticking along. Probably my favourite transfer in so far this season. And then Saka, captaincy, six points. He managed to get three points. That was it. There was a blank and it's really disappointing. The one thing that does comfort me in this tough time is over 1.52 million FPL managers also put the captaincy on Saka. So there was company and yeah, it's just really disappointing. He had 20 shots in the box since game week 15 and I was really expecting this to be the week where... We've all been so disappointed with his record so far this season. I just, oh, I don't know. I expected more from him, but it happens. And I think what really, really stung this game week was when we all thought that he got an assist and then the goal accreditation panel ruled that it was actually an own goal for Henderson. So that got taken away. So we had the feeling and the experience of Saka getting goals, uh, getting points, but unfortunately... It did not linger, but on to happier things. Palmer, I thought Fulham Chelsea was going to be full of more goals, but it was just a 1-0 win to Chelsea, which I will take. Very good. And the goal came from Palmer in the form of a penalty. So again, really good for my team. Kicking myself a bit because my captaincy was originally on Palmer. I moved it to Saka because the defensive data, Palace looked awful defensively, and it, the data was correct. They did concede five goals. So <laughs> it's just... I hate the phrase, but right, right, right decision, wrong outcome. It's just one of those weeks. Then Solanke also blanked, but I am keeping the faith with him because I do like the look of Bournemouth's fixtures over the next three weeks. Watkins got so unlucky against Everton. He got one point. <laughs> he also got a, card, a yellow card. He had six shots in total in the game and didn't manage to get a single goal. And I read a really fun, annoying fact that the last time he got six shots in a single game was against Brighton when he scored that hat-trick. So it was just really, really unfortunate for this game. But yeah, didn't put the captaincy on him. So I guess things could have been worse. 
And then the star, never thought I'd be saying this, the star of my game week, Darwin, what a guy. He got two goals. I could not believe it. If you watch my team selection for this game week, I actually said Darwin Hall, I think, in my predicted points. Didn't expect it to happen, but I got two goals from him. So I'm really, really happy. And I think that's really helped me in the ranks where I haven't had Gabrielle. I didn't have Jota. I think Darwin was I, my, my knight in shining armour. Again, never thought I'd be saying that, but he did save the team. In terms of the bench, there's not really too much to say. Obviously, bench to Bravka, but it made no difference in terms of my goalkeepers. Trippy is coming in for Trent. Pinnock only one point, And then, of course, Salah is out at AFCON. So nothing from him. Now, you may be looking at my team and wondering what my plan is for the next couple of game weeks. I think the obvious thing here is that I have no City assets whatsoever, which is a huge, huge error. And after news today, I may be bringing back Harlan for this game week. It was announced that Haaland is back in training and Haaland has also tweeted, oh, how I've missed this. For some reason, I've cropped off his boots, but there he is tying up his little football boots, ready to go, ready to score some goals. I have missed having the <laughs> consistency of captaining Haaland. Although I do think that probably held me back in the ranks because I probably should have captained Salah more often, but hey, that's in the past. Good news that City are actually playing Spurs in the FA Cup fixture on Friday the 26th of January. So I'll be watching that very closely to see if Haaland's in the squad, if he starts, if he gets any minutes, how he's looking, everything I will be analysing. So this is quite good because Pep is notorious for giving very vague team information. <laughs> so I am quite excited for Haaland to come back in. I think a lot of people are going to be ripping up their teams, myself included. If I'm bringing in Haaland for the upcoming game week, I will have to take a minus four hit because I don't have enough money in the bank to just do a straight transfer from one of my front three. So what's the plan? I will tell you. There has also been an update on Salah. And Salah's injury update is not looking good for him whatsoever, but it does make the decisions to transfer him out a lot, lot easier. If he is out for 28 days, and that takes him to the 19th of February, and if game week 25 is a double for Liverpool, then that means he'll miss the first game of that game week. So I think this is just a very, very obvious move for me to take out Salah, sort out my midfield, probably bring in a City midfielder. And then if we get the news that Haaland is playing in the FA Cup, if we see him, he's looking good, he's looking strong, comes off, not injured, <laughs> he's looking well, then I will probably take the minus four to bring him back in. Of the front three that I'll need to take out, I need to choose between Solanke, Watkins and Darwin. Do let me know in the comments who you think I should take out. There are pros and cons to all of them. My initial reaction was Darwin, but after he managed to score two goals, I don't know. It's really, really tough. But Haaland will be coming back in as soon as I have confirmation that he's fit enough. There are some other City assets I have also been eyeing up. So I'm going to discuss two midfielders and one defender. First up to discuss, and the one that's most likely to come into my team, is Bernardo Silva. Now, he has really been flying under the radar. And if DNF Dow is watching this, he did tweet me the other week to say, why is no one talking about Bernardo? I said, so many players, so little time. And I really wish I'd actually brought him into my team sooner. But I will hold my hands up and say, I'm so happy with my midfield. And I was really reluctant to get rid of Salah until we had some more concrete information on his potential return date. So now the spot is open. Bernardo Silva, straight in there. It's also a price thing. He's 6.5 million, which is a lot cheaper than the other two. Well, not the other two. A lot cheaper than Foden. He's only owned by 5.6% of managers as well, which makes him even more appealing for me. He's averaging 5.2 points per match this season. He's had six goals and four assists. He's got an expected goal involvement of 0.41 per 90, and he's had 15 bonus points. He's on 89 points in total, and I just, I am surprised he hasn't been discussed more. But I wouldn't probably, I probably would be going straight to Foden if I could afford him. But taking Salah out, bringing Haaland in, I'm not going to have enough money to spend £8 million on a midfielder. And I don't want to take a hit, a minus eight, to bring in Foden and Haaland. I'd much rather do the minus four and I can bring in Silva. I think I'm going to probably be doing Salah to Bernardo Silva no matter what. And then maybe holding out for the Haaland transfer until there's some more concrete information. But another really good option is Phil Foden. And it does pain me a bit that I can't get to him. Or I could, but then I'd have to go without Haaland. And I think it's just too much. But he's averaging 4.9 points per match. And he's had five goals and six assists. He does have less bonus points than Bernardo Silva, which I was surprised about with 12 so far. But his expected goal involvement is higher than Bernardo Silva's at 0.47 per 90. So I think he is a really, really nice option. He's a really impressive player to watch. I think he was the most transferred in player this game week. And he did blank. 
But apart from this game week, he has been looking so strong and he is one of those players that I'm so scared of not owning. So hopefully Bernardo Silva can <laughs> alleviate, alleviate some of that fear. And then we have got a defender. If I'm going to go for the City triple up, so I think it's basically guaranteed I'll have Bernardo Silva. I will be going for Haaland if he's fit. Otherwise, I think my second choice would probably be Walker in defence. I would like to double up. Mm, oh, no, I don't think I could double up on the City midfielders. Wait for this to come back to bite me <laughs> when Bernardo Silva gets an assist and Phil Foden gets a hat-trick. But Kyle Walker, I've been eyeing up for a while. I'm a bit frustrated because I was going to bring him in a couple of game weeks ago, but I went for Saliba instead. Saliba then didn't get a clean sheet. Kyle Walker did against Sheffield United. And then this game week, he managed to get an assist as well. But I think with Saliba getting the um, clean sheet, we're kind of balanced out. So I just need Saliba to get an attack in return and to feel a bit less bitter about it. But I am kicking myself a little bit about that assist against Newcastle. But he's kept six clean sheets this season and he's had two assists so far. Again, 5.4 million, that's a nice price point. And I think I'm looking to downgrade somewhere in my defence, probably downgrading Trippier. There's some transfer rumours going round about him. So I can downgrade Trippier to uh, Walker or potentially Trent to Walker. But I'm, again, <laughs> I had a gut feeling about Salah and it was wrong. But I've got a gut feeling that Trent will be back soon enough and I need that Liverpool asset. And he's really, really attacking as well. So if I end up transferring out Darwin for Haaland, it'll be good to have Trent in there. So I think Trippier to Walker is probably the likely move from these three. But do let me know in the comments and especially let me know who you think I should replace in my front three with Haaland. So there you have it. This was a very chatty video. It felt very live streamy, but obviously I get distracted by the chat. So I thought it'd be best to just film whilst I'm by myself and go through my thoughts. As always, let me know in the comments what you think. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. I will be uploading a team selection ahead of the deadline, probably on Sunday, I would say. I'm going to aim for Sunday and hopefully be doing a Q&A with Ellie, which we haven't done for absolutely ages. So I'm really looking forward to that. That will be taking place on Thursday around 5 p.m. So do subscribe to the channel, switch the notifications on, don't miss any of the content and I will see you in the next video.